And now, live from the studios of Freedoms Phoenix, Ernest Hancock. Believe me when I say we have a difficult time ahead of us. But if we are to be prepared for it, we must first shed our fear of it. I stand here without fear because I remember. I remember that I am here not because of the path that lies before me, but because of the path that lies behind me. I remember that for 100 years we have fought these machines. And after a century of war, I remember that which matters most. We are still here! Welcome back to Declare Your Independence with me, Ernest Hancock, here in Phoenix, Arizona, from the BEA Beautiful Studios of Freedoms of the Nest, freedomsphoenix.com. And those of you that are looking at the video archive or the live web streaming, go to Freedoms of the Nest, freedomsphoenix.com, and top up there, you'll see the radio show or down a few. We had some new postings up there, but uh, you'll see the blue in there. It says today's archive. Today's show, you go in there, and it'll just start playing the live feed. If you do that, you can see, I'll push the button. You'll see the components for what we're going to be talking about today. Now, our guest is Rick Rainierson. Am I say, saying that right, Rick? Yes, you are, Ernie. Okay. Now, Rick Rainierson has a spy car, and it's, um, you know, I, I'm i not even sure I would call it that. I mean, it's kind of like, um, you know, protect me from cops lying car. That's what it is. But the... Uh, and and we have so much experience with this, and I and I'm so glad. Aren't you in Austin? Am I getting that right? Um, actually, I, uh, I I'm not in Austin. I'm currently I'm in uh, Colorado, up in the mountains. But uh, I do know some people from Austin. All right, where was the um, your problems with the police that promoted uh, you doing this? Well, uh, it was uh, I had a an issue in San Antonio. Um, where I was uh, unlawfully pulled over and unlawfully arrested. Unfortunately, on that one, I can't really get into the details, just on advice of my, uh, my lawyer. But uh, but then I've had uh, another incident that was shortly thereafter, um, which was actually with the Border Patrol checkpoint in Texas. And that one is actually up on YouTube. I learned my lesson from the first one and installed some cameras. So that one you can actually watch the 35-minute uh, detention for no reason. No, no, we um, have lots of video of lots of detentions for lots. We wish we had your car, okay? So let's just <laughs> let's just assume that, you know, it didn't go well for you. <laughs> so we don't need to talk about all the, you know, we, we, got, we got all kinds of video of Billy Club beating, all right? So let's go ahead and get in. It's a Mitsubishi, what, Eclipse or something? What is that? Right. It's a, it's a Mitsubishi Eclipse. Um, and uh, I, I got it armored, and so it's got bulletproof glass and, uh, and uh, a fabric called Spectre Shield on the inside to make it bulletproof. But more importantly than that, it's got uh, multiple cameras, four cameras on the outside of the vehicle for essentially 360-degree coverage, uh, four independent microphones external to the car, um, and then it has uh, four cameras that are hidden in the rearview mirror for the inside plus a microphone. And all of that video and audio gets streamed back to a DVR system that's in the back. Um, and that also uh, includes or captures GPS position and speed, uh, turn signals being on or off, doors open, braking. Uh, so all the sensor data is captured in this DVR system. And it's wirelessly uh, connected to the Internet, which is really the beauty of it because it can stream that video and secure it on a server in the uh, off chance that, uh, you know, you know, law enforcement illegally broke into my car and tried to make uh, evidence disappear. This is um, I we I, I tell you what I got. Uh, do you have, you've heard of Checkpoint USA with Terry Bressy and so on? I would imagine. Yep, I love Terry Bressy. He's a good friend. Okay, now Terry and I have been good friends for a long time, and when he got arrested in December of '02, that me I started doing radio in February of '03. And he was one of my first guests, man. We just plastered living crap out of it. Freedom's Phoenix started getting up. 
the Border Patrol unions are trying to get him fired, and they're doing every government favor or anything they could because he is uh, faculty at the University of Arizona. And what happened was, you know, he uh, does Space Watch or, yeah, something like that, Sky Watch or whatever it is, looking for asteroids and meteors to make sure we all don't die, okay? So he has to travel from University of Arizona to Kitt Peak a lot and back and forth, and he could see that they were going through this, uh, you know, we're learning how to be a police state kind of stuff. And he's going, oh, no, 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 I see what's going on here, and it's illegal as heck, and he did his thing. Well, they started taking down his videos. YouTube was freak. I'm going, screw them. We'll put them up on the search. So we created the server space for writers and columnists and so on, people like him, to be able to actually put the video up on Freedom's Phoenix servers. And I go, tell them to come tell me to take it down. Well, let's play. Okay? Mm-hmm. Well, they didn't want to play. So... That kind of, you know, you just said, oh, never mind, that, that's not going to work. Now, he got his settlement, um, uh, I don't know, it was a couple hundred thousand dollars, and he goes, you know what, Ernie, you know, thank you, and he sent me a movie recording pack similar to what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Happen to have it right here. Whoop, just dropped it. Okay, this is, you know, it comes in, uh, let me go ahead and put it up for the video. This is the actual device right here. That's called Movie, M-U-V-I. And I talked to Pete Iyer of Cop Block and, uh, you know, Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour. And Pete Iyer says he sent uh, one to Free Talk Live, the Ian 2 that gave it to him, said, here, you need this. Yes, you do. See, and it comes with a little, you know, mount to go on your window and all that kind of stuff. So I got to mount this before I need it. All right. And so I got it. I'm like, cool. So Terry sent those out to people he thought that would make use of them and have a need because of exactly what you have gone through. He did. So he videotaped everything. But you went you went freaking postal. You're going, you know what, on on the uh, – you customize the left and right rearview mirrors, your rearview mirror inside. You have uh, – are you able to tell us where all these cameras are? Oh, sure. Um, yeah, Pete Iyer actually did a video for Cop Block where uh, I gave a tour of the car and showed all the different devices at the uh, Peaceful Streets Projects Police Accountability Summit in Austin. And sure, I can tell you anything you need to know. Tell me. You know, you got uh, – because I remember it's underneath – you, like, had to customize the mirror um, housing on the left and right side. And uh, how did you do that? Right. That's uh, one of our guys uh, – in San Antonio, uh, his name's Manny. He's a uh, he's an electrical engineering student and uh, just real handy with cars. And so, uh, so I invited him out to, uh, to basically install all those systems that are on there. Some of them are installed by Texas Armor Incorporation, but uh, most of the surveillance stuff actually was installed by my buddy Manny. And he actually created um, from scratch those uh, those mirrors. He went out and grabbed. Uh, from a junkyard, some some mirrors from the Mitsubishi Eclipse, and then he actually created the plastic housing and uh, and, and did all the plastering and the painting and everything and, and wired that up so it essentially looks factory. Yeah, no, it cameras. looks beautiful. I mean, you came, if you didn't know any, you thought it was just a rear view camera, you know, mm-hmm. that which is, heck, they want to go to that and you won't have the mirror anymore, you just have the camera. So, you know, and, and which a lot of times they do on vehicles, certainly RVs. There's no reason why you can't record that video at a microphone. I mean, you know, this is the future as far as I'm concerned. And as this started getting, you know, worse, and I got to tell you that before the, a break, we're coming up on a break here. Mark Victor, a good friend of mine, is a criminal defense attorney. And he goes, you know, one time they went after him in a judicial review. They tried to get his bar card. He just really slapped the prosecutor around. And what he did is he goes to a guy that was in, a, it was a bar fight, kind of just stupid thing, and, and some off-duty cop went there and just started beating the living crap out of him, and that's yeah, a long story. But what happened was, he goes, they lie. They, all, they do what they always do. They always lie. So I told him to bring a friend, like kind of his size or so on, and put him in a suit, and he put his def- the defendant in the seats behind him and had his friend sitting up with him. Then in the hallway, before the court thing, he goes, now, do what I told you to do. And he goes, yeah, that's him over there. So the cop just assumed that was the guy. Well, can you identify the guy, my client, which is in the courtroom? Oh, yeah, that's him. Oh, that's him. And he identified the friend, puts him up on the stand. And what's your name? License. Totally different guy. Everything. Boom. Case dismissed. And they were pissed. And he goes, because they do it all the time. 
they always lie. They just, that's the default position. Even when it's in the best interest not to, they just lie. Arizona has been one of the hottest real estate markets in the past, up until the last couple of years. Homes that were once going for half a million to a million dollars in prestigious areas are now going for less than half of what the original purchase price was. That makes it a very good time to buy. So if you were ever thinking of retiring to Arizona's inviting climate and laid back and friendly lifestyle, now is the time. That's where I can help. This is Donna Hancock with Brangus Realty, and I have provided a way for you to search for properties that are of interest to you all at your own convenience and without having to give out any personal information. Visit my webpage at DonnaHancock.com to start your search today. And when you're ready to make a move to Arizona's warm and sunny climate, please feel free to call or text me at 602-828-1819. Many are working hard to make sure Arizona is not only a beautiful place to live, but a free and peaceful one as well. So what are you waiting for? Make your move today by calling 602 828 one eight one nine, and don't forget to visit my webpage at donahancock.com. To be a part of the show, call 602-264-2800. 602-264-2800. And now, Ernest Hancock. Welcome back to Declare Your Independence. With me, Ernest Hancock, and my guest, Rick Renierson, Spy Car. Now, from the previous hour, we were talking about the anti-gravity thing, blah, blah, blah. It, the article is called Taming Gravity by Jim Wilson in Popular Mechanics. Cody Hall, a, a listener to the show, said, hey, I can find that. I got I got buttons on keyboards and stuff. So he did. So I linked it up there. You go anti-gravity, Freedom's Phoenix, and, that, and the uh, Dr... Um, what's her name? Nangley or uh, whatever her name is. The point is, is that uh, there, everybody, what I, was amazing to me in a lot of the articles, everybody was looking for her as much as I was. Hey, man, what happened to her? And this is called the Bose-Einstein theory. What it, that long story, go, go read. You know, we're going to do a show on this because it has a lot to do with our energy project that we're doing because I'm not waiting. I don't trust these guys. You know, anytime we are freed from... You know, they go, oh, no, 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 you're you're not allowed. Nope. Wouldn't be prudent at this juncture because uh, we make a bunch of money off of you just being livestock. And that attitude permeates society in so many different ways. And it goes all the way down to, I got a shiny badge, you don't, and here's my gun, and you're just mine. I mean, it's and they're taught that way. They're trained that way. You respect my authority. The number one thing is, if you don't kiss butt enough, and if they have, we've had situations you know, that reminds me, Baudet. Call uh, June, find out how Eric's doing, what his sentence is, and everything that's coming up. Because I know he did. He got sentenced to 13 years. We kept track of him for uh, a little bit and everything. A good uh, friend of ours, their son, good guy, you know, just not bothering anybody, but he did do a lot of activism in the courts. He used the courts. He challenged the... Um, the demand that you have to have a driver's license. And he'd go to court, and they'd go through, and they'd win and win, and they didn't and it pissed him off, and bad guys didn't like it. And this is in the mid-'90s, and it's all this Patriot stuff and all, and, you know, like I uh, got Ron Paul bumper stickers, pull them over kind of thing. And, you know, I'm just going, wow, man, this is – and what they did is they pulled him over, and the guy – the officer had a match 1911, and he just pulled out the draw on him, and it went off. And they had a killing here in northern Arizona that a uh, highway patrolman did that. He was just being all your mama and in your face and had his gun drawn, accidentally went off and killed the guy. Well, he admitted, that, okay, it was an accident. I'm sorry. You're ever so sorry if I killed your son. It was because he was a younger guy. And it was just, uh, you know, so they, oh, we banned these pistols, these hair triggers and everything. We don't offer that. Well, this guy, of course, he didn't care. And he did same thing. He pulled up being a butthead because... Eric was out. They knew who he was. You know, he's a nonviolent guy, and he was out shooting with his dog up in northern Arizona, and that's what he did. He was a big uh, shooting enthusiast. So he's out with a German Shepherd out shooting, taillight thing, pull him over, and he gets out of the car, and he sees he has a sidearm on. So he draws down on him, down on him, and when he drew his gun, it went off. Well, the officer, what Eric was telling me, he goes, the officer is like, Oh, man, this is not going to look good on a report kind of thing. So he just started trying to kill him. So he dived behind the front of his car, drew his six gun. It was just like a you know revolver, and just a boom, boom, boom in the air, and then took off into the desert. Turned himself in later, man. Crazy rogue cop. 
Come to find out later that he had a fight with the supervisor. He's just going to take it out on John Q. Public. Later, he would, you know, resign and under stress and all this kind of stuff, and they got rid of him. But what happened was they wanted to get his employee file, his jacket. And they the court ordered county attorney, turn over whatever, get it. And they go, no, we're not going to do it. When always the Supreme Court, define a court. No, because the guy was a rogue cop. He was scum. And this was, it was so open, whatever, 13 years. Boom. And there's so many things went on in that trial. He was out. You know, all during the trial. They, you know, Bond, you know, yeah, he's out, you know, for a couple of years. And then, boom, 13 years. So it, it should be coming up pretty soon. He may be out already. So we're going to check on that. And I just, so to think that I don't think there's bad cops out there, I got so many examples of people, good, close friends, my own personal experiences. I just, yeah, some boss, how high? Because I deal with it later. But if you show even the least little, you know, resistance to lick and boot, oh, here it comes. Now, I want, we can't get into the details of Rick Renierson's uh, particular situation, but I'm, it was enough to motivate him to wire his car. And I'm wondering why an Eclipse, I mean, you just like the car? I mean, they're pretty cars. I mean, you just said, hey, if I'm going to do it, it's going to be a cool car. I mean, why'd you pick that one? Well, yeah, I like the Eclipse, um, and, but I'm and I'm not a flashy guy. You know, I, you know it's a, it turns out to be a relatively expensive car because of the modifications. But um, you know, it's uh, low key, and my intent is is to just blend in. You know, I'm not out there trying to to be flashy or trying to make something happen. Uh, you, know, um, you know, I just want to drive my car. It's just a regular car, um, and uh, but it has surveillance on it, and that's the only thing that makes that car special. Well, if they were to go, how does it, does it continually always stream to the internet? Or is it you flip a switch or what? How does, how does this work to where they can't just, you know, crush the car, take all the electronics and, you know, pound it out of you? Right. Yeah, I would actually have to, um, over the internet, um, make it stream. Um, I'm actually uh, working on some software now. Um, that essentially, I have a center-mounted uh, iPad on my console I'll have a uh, uh, an application where I just press a button, and what that'll do is it'll go back to my uh, my home computer or uh, you know Amazon Cloud wherever I host my software, and then it'll know okay he wants to pull information, so then it'll take uh, and and connect over the internet to my car's DVR, and then it'll pull footage from five minutes prior to me initiating that action, knowing that you know likely that five minutes prior is important. It'll pull that, and then it'll continue to also download the data. Um, there on out until I tell it to stop. Um, and that software, we want to want to make that software uh, work with the cheapest DVR that we can find. And right now, our website over at Veterans Against Police Abuse, uh, we have a contest. So if anyone wants to, uh, you know, research, help us research uh, the cheapest DVR um, that will allow connecting to the internet, we will buy that system for the person who finds it. So we have a contest up. Uh, and our, what our hope is is to is to try to find the the cheapest DVR that will allow us to secure the evidence over the internet. You know, most people don't have bulletproof cars, um, so you know it, it doesn't take much for a cop to get into the vehicle and and make evidence disappear. So, having it secured over the internet to a place they can't get it is really a primary concern, um, and we want to make that affordable so we can get it in the hands of more Americans. You know, this is uh, I can see where this is going. You know, this is this because there's a need. I mean, you know, this stuff doesn't happen in a vacuum. You know, it's just, uh, you know, but what do you think has happened? How, how old are you? I'm 38. So you're not, a you know, a child. I mean, you know, this you've been around long enough to be able to recognize trends. And I'm going, is it is it trending to where you, you felt like it's a police state that, you know what, this wasn't a random kind of, you know, uh, uh, occurrence. This is a trend, and I'm preparing for the trend. Is that where your head's at? Yeah, I, I do think it's a uh, essentially it's a police state. Um, when a when a law enforcement officer can pull you over for any reason or no reason at all, and then arrest you, kidnap you, and then you know ruin your life in in, in some cases. And when that happens regularly, um, then that to me is a, is a police state. It's time for a surveillance kit on your car. That's what we'll talk about when we come back in just a little bit. 
Take control of your money today and do it with style. Young Austrians are right now fashioning the silver economy. Would you like to take part? You'll find all the tools you need at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Don't Tread on Meme is the only place where you can get your hands on silver dime trading cards with the most unforgettable designs, like Clint Eastwood's Fistful of Silver Dollars, Murray Rothbard, Enemy of the State, the Ron Paul Love Illusion, and the cover art of George Orwell's book 1984. Download the free silver calculator app from the iPhone or Android markets and get up to the minute silver spot prices at your fingertips. And hey, we're all Austrians now, so why not express your passion for silver and promote the ideas of honest money with Don't Tread on Memes clever apparel? Boycott an empire of theft. Buy silver. Trade with value. Build a society of consent. Do it all at Don't Tread on Meme.com. That's Don't Tread on Meme.com. It's time for Declare Your Independence with Ernest Hancock. Veterans. Veterans against and for stuff. You know what? What, what, what might they be against? How about the uh, police state? Let's do that. Veterans Against Police Abuse dot org. That would be, I don't know, is that, you know, we're abusing police. We should be against uh, abusing police or them abusing us. You know, that's, that's, that's an interesting, you know, thing to look at because, you know, I remember, you know, a time when I was a kid, you know, you might be thinking that was, you know, somebody was abusing police, you know, and hey, you don't think that anymore. I, I, I give you this, you know, this point. When I was a kid and there would be a policeman behind us, it's like waving at him. You know, hi, oh, we're better off a policeman's behind us. And of course, our parents probably weren't thinking that. But, you know, we would be going, yay, hi, you know, and all, and yay, and we're safe and better than policemen. Then I remember it was um, late 90s or something. I, I mean, I, this is the only time I ever did this. I'm coming off an off, off ramp of the freeway and at the light, you know, at the exit. In front of me is a mounted policeman on a motorcycle, and he had a frame around his uh, license plate, and it says, Smile, I could be behind you. And I was so pissed off. And I called the station, asked for the lieutenant, and I said, Look, you know, I'm, I, I've never called. I'm just pissed off. You know, that they would have this attitude that, you know, nah, 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 you're, you're lucky you're behind me because I could be behind you because I'm, like, got a gun and stuff. And I just, I just, oh, it just pissed me off. Now, I don't know, he went and said and something, you should take it off or don't or they don't care. You know, but I, I, I was compelled because I can see the attitude, this attitude of just because we got a gun and we can't. Well, you know, you always have when you do the kind of negative waves. You know, there's always a repercussion. There's always a pushback. There's always, and human beings are creative. And a lot of times they want you to be violent. They want you to do this. It justifies the nightstick upside the head. What they don't want is they don't want everybody to know what they're doing. That's what they don't want. So here we have Rick Renierson comes up with, and now he's got another project and an app that he wants to deal with, and we're going to talk about. It's called iCitizen. Now, Rick, tell us all about that, man. Go. All right, the uh, iCitizen application is basically going to be software that you can put on your smart device, so a, a Droid or an iPhone. You'll have that application. And then the other component will be a remote server that will communicate with that device. So it's, uh, right now you just imagine you're driving and uh, you see the lights in the rearview mirror. and You go to this application, you hit one button, and a couple of things happen. First thing that starts happening is the smart device records and streams the audio and video to that remote server to secure it. And there's lots of applications that do that already, like Bambuser or Quick. So those are great. Uh, now, you're saying that it will go back five minutes and, you know, retroactively start pulling from the DVR, uh, your drive or whatever, to put that up to because it's pertinent. That, that's actually a separate software system that we're working on. Uh, this one would uh, would not be connected to a DVR, so it would just be your, your smart device. So it would just start recording from... Uh, when you hit the button, okay, so you, you would hit that button. It would start recording and then streaming to secure that evidence on a remote server. Okay, like so you're talking about not just the software is not just it's going to be associated with your car. It's anybody's smartphone device. So you're that's in addition to this other project. Exactly. Okay. Yep. 
and it'll secure and uh, stream that uh, that uh, video and audio. But more importantly, and this is what makes it a little bit more unique, and it kind of uh, is in the along the lines of what uh, John Bush with uh, Lone Star, Liberty Bell, and Porcupine have have done. The other thing that it will do is it will already know your network because you will have went to the remote server and set up your account, put in uh, individuals you want contacted if you need to alert them, uh, put in their phone numbers and their email addresses. So it will already have this information. So not only will it stream this stuff back to the remote server to secure it, but then it will access your personal network and send out text messages and emails to your network and saying, hey, something's going on. Here's a link. Please click on this link to meet up in a chat room where you can monitor the situation. So all these people get this alert, hey, something's happened to Rick. They click on the link from their computers. Now they're in a chat room. In this chat room, they are listening to the audio stream, uh, watching the video as it's happening, and the software will then help them organize in a way where they can be most useful. For example, it will, um, it will let everybody in the chat room know how far they are from my location. So if they want to... Uh, head out to my location and get cameras on to add to the information, they can do that. If a person decides they're going to do that, they just click one little button and everybody knows this person's en route to go there uh, to record. And when they get there, they're using the same application on their smart device. That video stream is added to the chat room so everyone has benefit of all this information. Ah. Uh, in addition to that, it'll bring up media contact information uh, the software will know the location of where I'm pulled over, and it'll bring up media uh, inf- contact information there. Um, it'll bring up uh, information on law enforcement agencies that are there. And basically, it'll have a checklist of information uh, that people in the chat room can, can grab facts, relevant facts, and put these uh, into a little checklist. So it creates this, uh, Report. this one area yeah, that has all this information. So while they're listening, if they hear something that happens, um, they can... They can go ahead and contact media immediately. They can get lawyers to come out immediately. They can contact the supervisor immediately and give them relevant information. Hey, you know, LAPD officer, uh, you know, Smith, badge number, whatever, he's pulled over our friend at blah, 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 and he just told him that he pulled him over because he can. You know, what's going on here? You know, this is an outrage. Now, Will the media be able to have a link that they can go in and retroactively review the comments and all that kind of stuff? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that's the third component. Um, you know, this uh, component allows, uh, basically allows the cop to feel pressure in real time. When he starts getting phone calls from his supervisor, when his supervisor starts getting multiple phone calls while the incident is happening, hopefully that will get back to you know, the police officer, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll deflate any chance for violence. You know, we um, had so a know situation, uh, matter of fact, a friend of ours, she was just over yesterday, and the day before we had a party and so on, and uh, uh, she was up with us at, it was some freedom event thing, we were helping some activists in Las Vegas, and we were staying at some friends, and, you know, it's uh, blah, 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 long story, late at night, she's out front in a secured community kind of thing, just having a cigarette. Well, the people didn't know who she was. They called the security, they called the cops, and she's just like, you know what, I'm just, you know, screw you, I don't have to give you my it. And she was kind of just, you know, pissed off, and, you know, and then it goes from there. And, you know, uh, one of the other friends wakes me up, you know, bam, 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 bam. Hey, the cops are here, and Renee's out front, in front of the house. And, you know, in a nice community there and so on, we got to what? And I go out, what's going on? And, and it just, by that time, it had got to you not respecting my authority. So I already knew where this was going. So I just went and got my video camera, leaned up against the wall, and just tried to rest and closed my eyes and just had the video camera on. And the police officer, I could hear him uh, be advised or videotaping me, and everything changed. And it was just, you know, my respect, my authority turned into how can I get the hell out of here? And it was, I can see the difference in the, ad. They're, they're, you know, they don't like the light on them. And this, you know, sheds a lot, but think about it. As we've had these situations before in Keene, you know, we got a demo when uh, they arrested him and so on. What they do? They went around and collected a dozen cell phones. I mean, you know, they're just like, yep, gimme, 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 gimme. So when you do this, what do they do? I don't know. You know, at some point, there's going to, at some point in the future, at some point, you know, a year, a decade, you know, 100 years from now, at some point, 
they're going to be going to the people's houses and ripping out hard drives and scrubbing the internets and whatever. I mean, it always escalates. This is their mentality. So we have to change the culture, and this can help do that. What is your goal? Well, our goal is, uh, is exactly what you said. Um, you know, we want to we want Americans to arm themselves with technology that will secure evidence uh, that will protect them uh, in the in the case you know that, that, that they encounter uh, a law enforcement officer who breaks the law. Um, and we also want to uh, you know through the I Citizen, we will archive all this information in a way that people can see it. So if people want to see encounters, they can go there and they can see. Okay. This, this is the reality. This is how many. This uh, is going to be the biggest resource for a bunch of media to the point that they're not going to want. Heck, they're going to have a law making it Ill- Oh, it's called wiretapping. Oh, we'll talk about that. We know you're out there. We can feel you now. We know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. We don't know the future. We aren't here to tell you how this is going to end. We're here to tell you how it's going to begin. We're going back to editing the next edition of Freedom's Phoenix Digital Magazine now, where we are telling the people what you don't want them to know. We're showing them a world without you, a world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries, a world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice we leave to you. Subscribe at freedomsphoenixeasy.com. That's freedoms with an S, phoenixeasy.com. Freedom's the answer. What's the question? You're listening to Ernest Hancock. of being told you are a liar. Liar, liar, pants up. Of course, you were there, and you were the one getting billy clubbed, but uh, or shot, you know, or tased, or whatever, but uh, you didn't have a shiny badge. You didn't, you, know, you respect their authority enough. Let me tell you one thing they do not want is a freaking constitutional lesson on the side of the road. You know, that, that you no, know, they don't like that one bit. And they will make up stuff and often do. And, well, so you go, you know what? I got a version of the events. It's called um, um, videotape and audio tape of what happened. That's, that, that's what I got. So this is, um, we're, gonna, we're encouraging Rick to write for uh, this next month's uh, digital magazine because I can see, I'm looking into the future. And I can see the empowerment of individuals as, you know, as we technology makes it to where we can live out in Lone Prairie and off the grid and we can produce our own energy, our own water, our own uh, protection, our own, our own, our own. Heck, we got printable machine guns we can do now. You know, 3D printing, boom, done. You know, I, you know I, I just I got my own whatever the heck, you know, plasma ray, and I, you know, I win. I'm over here now. Now what? Well, they, they, man, they can't have that. They hate that. And they'll make up stuff. You're a bad guy. We're going to put you in jail forever because they can. So this is, I can see that this is going to be more and more popular and, and as a business. Now, is this an activist thing, Rick? Or is this, you know, you know, segueing into all of a sudden it's a convert, commercial venture? Well, I, I don't really use the word activist to describe myself. For me, it's a matter of, uh, you know, I took an oath to support and defend the Constitution, <sighs> and I take that oath seriously. And um, so... I feel it's my duty to to attack a you know a threat or to defend you know help the people defend themselves against a, a threat to their liberties. Well, there's going to be you know commercial demand. I mean, you know, I, I can see. Well, heck, you bought it. You spent a bunch of money on this stuff. There's going to be more and more and more and more and more and more and more people exactly like you going. You got a kit, boom, want it. Hell, I got this this movie thing is made for just this. I mean, you know, who gives a crap about recording inside your car? You know, I'm driving. I know what happened in my car. I'm in my car. Oh, I got to record it for somebody else because somebody, you know, assaulting, being a pain in the butt, you know, cop. 
You know, I, you, you, when all of a sudden you're starting to see a market for this very thing. So have you been contacted? Hey, I want one. Build me one. Can I have one? Well, right now we haven't uh, we haven't actually created anything. So we've been just uh, at this point uh, just you know telling people what we've what we've used, what works for us. We don't make any money off of it. We don't sell anything. Uh, in the future, when we do produce our own products like the iCitizen and some other software, um, you know, our intent is not to make money off of it. Um, so it's not a commercial enterprise because we want it to be in the hands of as many people as possible. Now, you know, we I do have a, an idea for uh, the iCitizen. You know, people are going to be able to go to iCitizenHQ.com, and our vision is that they'll see a map and they'll see dots, on a Google map of, of, of LEO encounters that are going on. They can click on those and they can listen in. Uh, there'll be archived data so people can get this big picture. And we could sell advertising and, and uh, you know, something like that. Oh, my um, goodness. Oh, my money. goodness. It's a live reality TV show that has feeds from all over the country. Oh, this one's boring. No blood. <laughs> oh, 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 this one's interesting. Let's do this. Let's watch it. You know, and live... Uh, viewing of this as it's going on right then. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. And beyond that, um, they'll have the archived information, So, um, and, and, and they will collect information from the person after the encounter. And the point of that is, you know, to make it, you know, sure, somewhat entertaining or informative for gawkers who we'd sell advertising to to try to make money off of. But more importantly than that is to collect statistical data uh, to show, you know, this really is the reality. You know, a lot of people like to say, well, police abuse, it, it's really rare. It's only one bad apple. Well, we want to put information out there so people can actually see what that's like. In addition to that, we want to make it as easy as possible for other media outlets and lawyers to get the information they need very quickly so they can go there and shop around for work. I want lawyers to come to that site, peruse where they're at, quickly get the information that they want so they can contact the person and say, hey, I'm interested in representing you in a lawsuit. You know, um, I don't think, I think that's, as I understand it, that's illegal. They have to be approached. You can't go do, anyway, at different states. But the point is, is that, no, I understand your point. You know, this is, I, I'm like, um, okay, I, you know, well, lawyers would be advertising on your site. Hey, got a problem like this? Call me. I'll do it. You know? So this is, I, I man, I'm, I'm way ahead, and let me tell you, I've seen this in the past. And it, it, when the Internet first started in the 90s, there were a lot of smart guys that were using the Internet, you know, to put up information on bad cops, and they do that. You you go after them, you attack them, just like with Terry. You know, here they come. You'll have something up there. Oh, it's evidence. It's wiretapping. It's whatever. They're going to do any and everything they can to come after you, which, you know, kind of gives you media coverage and more support and everybody understand what's happening anyway. But, I mean, do, do you anticipate there's going to be some pushback from the man? Absolutely. If I'm successful, I fully Ah. Expect- See, you know. <laughs> 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 the more successful you are, they go, oh, hell no. So this is, have you gotten any pushback yet? Um, we haven't really been successful yet. Um, we're, we're still pretty new. Um, we're just uh, dabbling at this point, um, just getting our legs. But I expect that we're going to be, we're going to be, a, we're, we're going to have something to offer the community that's going to be real and tangible here within the next five years for sure. So you're, um, what is, uh, keeps you busy during the day? What's your day job? Uh, well, I'm actually in the military, but uh, of course, all my views here, my personal views, and don't represent the Department of Defense. Oh, so you're actually in the military, right? So when this happened to you, you were a veteran. Yes. And that had an impact on your uh, career. Definitely. In what way? I mean, it's just because they're part of the machine, and they said, you know, slap this boy around because because he needs to be slapped around. Well. You know, I, again, just on advice of my counsel, I can't really get into the, the details of that, but, you know. But they're all part of the same machine. Well, not everybody is, but uh, unfortunately, you know. Yeah, uh, no, I, I've seen this. It's, it's in fact, uh, well, I can go, it's a long story, but bottom line is, is that, you know, you call the right guy, they have a supervisor, and it's like, look, we're government agency of a government agency, and you're a government agency, and you got your government guy, and he's not being the support of government, you know, and then God... 
forbid that you actually resist or say no or no i'm going to court and they're going ooh, and they start putting pressure on you're so not allowed and i'll guarantee without knowing anything that the pressure on you from being in the military has definitely got from the civilian authorities going to your superiors on your pursuit of whatever you're doing in court am i correct Oh, absolutely. I mean, there is a linkage. I mean, if you, if you were to watch that Border Patrol checkpoint, you'll see that at the end of 30 minutes with two passports in their hands, a military ID and a driver's license, um, I've, been, I've answered every question they've asked me. I've complied with every request they've made of me, and that wasn't good enough. And at the 35-minute point, the supervisor gets on the phone and calls the military. He calls my commander. Why? To allegedly determine that I'm an American citizen with all that information in his hand. Um, you know, he was punishing me because, uh, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't licking boots. And that's exactly it. They want some submissiveness. They, they don't want an American, you know, they don't want to deal with an American. They want to deal with somebody who's subservient. And um, so that's what that was. You know, they call it contempt of cop or whatever. Now, in addition to that, you know, several uh, days later, despite the fact that the full video from four different cameras was up on YouTube and they were aware of it, the chief border patrol agent actually wrote a letter to my commander full of, uh, you know, misinformation despite having the evidence on YouTube. So, um, unfortunately for some people in the military, um, they will certainly leverage that against you, uh, which is unfortunate because, um, you know, uh, by resisting uh, violations of my constitutional rights, I am doing exactly what I swore I would do when I, when I took the oath. You know, it's not that I'm against government. I'm part of good government. You know, I'm, yeah, yeah. The U.S. Navy, a global force for good. And you just have to laugh. But some people take this seriously that are in the military. Hey, man, I, I'm, I, I thought we were the good guys. Can we even try to be good guys? Is it possible to be good guys? Well, one of the good guys, Rick Renierson. Veterans Against Police Abuse.org. Veterans Against Police Abuse.org. Rick, thanks for doing this and stay in touch with us and let us know how we can help promote this because, I mean, you know, I already see a future. And uh, five years, uh, I think it might uh, ramp up a little faster than that. But we're glad you're there. Thanks for coming on the show, Rick. Pleasure, Ernie. Thanks for what you do. Okay.